Hello everyone, this is Akai, and welcome back to another episode of World of Warships. And today I'm saying goodbye to the Shukaku. Only, not really, I'm keeping the ship, but I am moving on to the Tier 10. And I know, I, I know carriers are getting a lot of hate, a lot of flack, and I'm in agreement. Like, I honestly don't think carriers really need to be in the game, but that's kind of my opinion. And yes, I know I'm being a little hypocritical because I am obviously taking out the carrier, but I really have nothing else to grind. And carrier definitely is dramatically different than what it used to be. So as you can see, if I can actually click on team members, we are in a tier 10 battle. And that's one of the issues with carriers. So one of the issues with carriers is obviously it will face tier 10 ships such as it is. And tier 8 ships, or tier 8 planes, sorry, really don't do so well when facing tier 10 ships. It They definitely do struggle more. Uh, they tend to lose a lot of planes, which, I mean, I'm sure a lot of other players are not complaining. And that's kind of the issue with carriers, is either the carrier is too weak to really do anything, to really be effective in battle, or it's really strong and uh, <laughs> pretty much sways the outcome of the battle. Obviously, Z-23 uh, showed up way too late uh, for me to effectively do anything, and this is... Yeah, see, planes are already uh, pretty, pretty damaged. I probably honestly should just recall them because I'm just losing my planes left and right. And that's, that's the thing about CBs. They're, like I said, they're either too strong or they're too weak. Yeah, I lost almost the entire fleet. I haven't really done much in the way of damage. Uh, I did get some spotting ribbons, but that's about it. Now, going back to kind of the issues with CVs is the fact that if they are top tier, especially tier 6, where I would say CVs are probably the strongest, they can outright control the effects of the battle to a certain degree. I mean, there's always a to a certain degree, but they can. And same way with tier A. If it's top tier, it outrights controls the aspect of the battle like many instances i've had battles end with just the cvs because the friendly cv can only do so much to protect allies it can drop a fighter but the fighter only lasts for a little while and Greta does shoot down all the planes but after that you have to send a new squadron over there to actually deal with it now i am <laughs> having fun with the curve first and this is one thing i like about uh, the Shikaku and the, well, IGN uh, CVs to say the very least. And I do apologize for the shakiness, but it's kind of just due to the fact of the replay. Is that the IGN obviously have those eye bombers with armor piercing shells, and against German battleships such as the uh, Kurfürst, and pretty much almost everything else except for DDs, it can outright do a lot of damage now that's kind of the issue i have with ign's certain segue into another aspect of these carriers is the fact that ign are they struggle with dot damage um their ap bombs are absolutely fantastic and actually right now i'm actually using the island cover uh to get in as close as possible before being detected uh, with my tour planes and yeah it's just if a CV focuses you you're gonna struggle so granted your a may prove pretty darn good but this curfers is definitely kind of feeling the uh, pressure of a CV I'm, I'm probably only going to get one more drop and one one definitely uh, thing to keep in mind is don't have all your planes in the squadron, uh, especially with IGN torp planes. I generally drop at least half my uh, squadron because right there I've lost about half of them. Um, so, yeah, definitely don't do that. Um, but with the IGN, dot damage is not really a thing. 
Uh, the only chance you really get for dot damage is flooding, and flooding is rare. Uh, it's not a very common occurrence. Granted, we did get a flooding on that curve first, and he is uh, flooding right now. But the flooding doesn't do as much as it used to. So that's why I think flooding needs to be increased for IGN carriers. The rocket planes can cause fires, but it's kind of limited. So really, the only thing IGN CVs are good for is actually uh, getting citadels, which... I mean, I'm not really complaining. I'm sure this Kerfers is despising me right now. As we get a double Citadel. Knocked off at least, I think, 10 or 15,000 off his health. And yeah, we're going to lose planes here. Uh, trying to get around just to get another drop off. Well, that's kind of the issue with IGNs. Uh, both the USN and the British carriers, they have... Uh, planes that cause fire granted uh i think usn's are definitely the better fire stars because granted it's nice to have the carpet bombing of the ig of the royal uh british carriers but they're carpet bombings and they only work really effective against ships that are big and kind of cumbersome dds are definitely not the right choice so yeah, I, I, I kind of have issues with CVs. I know I'm being a little hypocritical playing this. Um, I don't know. I, I know um, AA is getting a rework, which it kind of needs, to be perfectly honest. Uh, at the moment, for um, instance, defensive AA is completely and utterly useless, as far as I can tell. Granted, it does increase the damage, it does increase the damage, but it's not as good as it used to. And that's, I think, what a lot of people are having issues with, and I kind of sniped the skill, but that's a Z23 uh, down, so that's actually our very first skill. And CVs are very much uh, the downfall of a lot of DDs. Uh, at the moment do you actually get a fire and that's the only time you're ever ever going to get a fire with a shikaku or with ign uh cv so cvs i don't know i know it's still being kind of reworked and it's still kind of a work in progress everything is going to be changing in the future but I don't, I don't know. I, let, let me know what you guys think. I know I know for a fact that CVs get a lot of hate because um, there was actually one battle. I had a carrier, not a carrier, a cruiser uh, accused me of um, cheating, I guess. I don't know. Essentially, I dropped torpedoes very close uh against the land that i guess it looked like my torpedoes went through the island itself uh when in fact it didn't so i don't know so as you can see there uh definitely was recycling my, recycling my planes which is a very good idea especially when you are uh bottom tier like i am one issue one other thing to really keep in mind when you're going over islands it's gonna throw off your shots uh, especially with uh, rocket planes, it's going to extend the range a lot further. So that's something to keep in mind. And trying to attack ships that are hugging the island is going to be a little bit more difficult. So that is something to very much keep in mind uh, whenever playing this, playing ACV. So at the moment, our team is actually ahead uh, by one ship. Not that impressive at the moment. Uh, we do have a friendly ship Mikaze going after, uh, I believe, the, no, actually, I believe the CV is currently hiding <laughs> as much as he can. And right now, I'm just trying to assist my friendlies, uh, who I failed to mention. I do apologize. I have Ski in the Aki and Flame in the, the Richelieu. I do apologize for not uh, pointing them out. I generally try to make a habit of that. So trying to help them out, they're actually technically, besides the friendly Alsace, who's kind of close, they're the only ones really uh, kind of in range to do anything. 
And of course, I am going after the Republic. Now, I feel like the Republic kind of got neutered. Maybe it's just me, but when I played the Republic, it didn't feel like the AA was good as it used to be. Uh, I definitely remember the AA uh, pretty much outright destroying airplanes. So that is something to keep in mind when playing the Republic. I mean, not saying it can't shoot down planes, but it does have a blind spot per se, uh, meaning that it does not have a short range AA bubble. So if you can get within that short range AA bubble, uh, you definitely are going to be a little bit more uh, immune to the attack of the a guns and there is another tactic that is actually really beneficial and something you really need to keep in mind uh is dropping your planes prior to actually making the initial attack so you actually create invulnerability uh it's definitely a good tactic and something that you could work on right now just trying to get dot damage get to fire on that bismarck he's burning quite nicely and of course, these are rocket planes, and they do take a little while just to initiate the attack pattern. And so that means I have to uh, spend more time in the AA bubble. But just, like, I, I'm not really threatened by this Bismarck right now. And the Bismarck actually has fairly decent AA and <laughs> double fire. I, I, I complain that the fire is not that beneficial, but look at that. Get double fire on that Bismarck. He's going to burn uh, for a little bit. Uh, friendly team is definitely on uh, the way to winning this. Uh, I believe all that's left is a gearing that is currently hiding up north. Uh, Missouri that is currently staying kind of away. There we go. There's our second kill of the game. All that's left, like I said, is the Missouri, the gearing, and the Lexington, which the Lexington is currently doing his very best not to be hidden. And I guess this kind of leads to another thing I uh, really have paid attention to is I've seen many teams leave their CVs kind of out to dry, per se. Not saying that uh, it's entirely the carrier's fault. Sometimes it is. Sometimes carriers don't decide to move and just kind of sit in one place like a airbase. So... Sometimes it's the carrier's fault, but other times it is uh, the team's fault uh, not really helping out when a DD or even a battleship. I've actually seen battleships try to hunt down CVs, and it really feels like you're in a tier 4 match again. Um, so that is something kind of amusing. All right, Missouri is dead. Um going to try to get in there try to help out with the cap obviously there is a gearing gearing is being a downright pain plus the fact that uh the carrier is currently dropping the montana now one uh, nice little tactic you can use uh, especially when dealing with other carriers is when you initiate your planes immediately drop your fighters and yeah unfortunately we're not going to get any damage on that uh, so you can use your own fighters um, because that's my other issues with fighters is that fighters aren't really that good, especially playing as a cruiser. This is a very good example. Cruisers are probably my main complaint. So they do have the normal charges of fighters, but these fighters got nerfed to hell. They don't have a very wide range search pattern and it's a shikaku i do apologize it's a shikaku uh that's over here actually manages to take out the uh friendly montana um is that the fighters don't have a very long range they granted they they downright wreck any planes that come near them but they only last for 60 seconds so that's four minutes I really think, in my personal opinion, that uh, the length of time needs to be increased for fighters. Because, I mean, to be perfectly frank, they, they, the fighters have been pretty much neutered. 
Um, so that's my personal opinion. But anyways, this battle is actually almost over with. Uh, the Shikaku is going to go down uh, relatively quickly. And that is going to be it for the Shikaku. Finally moving on to the Hakuru, which is my first tier 10 uh, carrier, which I'm very much excited for. And yeah, look at that. Look how quickly my plans get shot down. Yeah. So, yeah. Goodbye, Shikaku. And that is going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you saw, hit the like and subscribe button. You guys have a great and fantastic day. Sai Jen.